guess it's time to practice some scales. Am I noodling? Yes. Am I practicing? Also yes. Uh, this is kind of a creative way to practice scales, um, but I am specifically choosing to play in a key using the notes of G major, play my G major scale, and I am playing it across two octaves, and uh, that is the kind of thing that we're going to be talking about today in this lesson. So. This is all about kind of figuring out a creative practice for playing scales, um, but also if you want to be like a very diligent metronome, this is the way I do it kind of player, I'm going to show you a couple of shapes for that as well. But it is all about two octave major scale and getting comfortable with that on the fretboard because it's, it can be intimidating. A lot of times people are like, I don't want to leave this area, but don't worry, it's fine. You know, same materials. We've got frets, we've got strings, we've got a neck both here and here. It's great. Um, so we're going to go over some of those patterns and shapes that I use. And if you want to get tab, notation, anything like that for this lesson, please head over to my Patreon page or my Truefire channel. I can't tell you how much it helps to having that, having that support there. So um, if you dig this, you know, please consider subscribing and checking out those types of things. It really goes a long way and benefits you, benefits me. Everyone's happy. We all learn how to play bass. It's great. Um, so in the meantime, let me get into this and show you a couple of the patterns that I like to use for what I call the two octave G major scale. Now first, before we go with two octaves, we have to play one octave. And I'm going to begin with my conventional four fret span at first. So this four fret span is um, saying, hey, I have four fingers, I'm going to assign one finger per fret, and we're going to play this kind of traditional scale shape that starts with our middle finger on the root note. So I'm going to start with my middle finger here on the third fret, G, and I'm going to go uh, basically G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp G in letters, in numbers or scale degrees, we would call it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight for octave. And then in fingering, I would call it my, you know, starting with my middle finger, which will be two, two, four, one, two, four, one, three, four. So there are three different ways that you can think about this and uh, three different ways that are that are deserving to be thought of this way. You know, like we want to know what notes we play. We want to know what the scale degrees are. We want to know what the proper fingering is. So think about all of those things as you practice this. Now, the great thing about this pattern is, hey, we can stay in one zone and do one finger per fret and be in a, in a good place. But uh, the downside is that we are stuck in this zone using one finger per fret and uh, staying in one place. So in order to go two octaves, because we would eventually run out of strings, we have to start moving vertically up the fretboard to some of our higher notes. And um, when I do that, I want to kind of first clock a couple of points that I want to hit, meaning like where are my root notes? So I know I'm going to be starting here at this G. There's another G here, which we will often refer to as just the octave because it's the G but higher. And then we want to ultimately get to one octave higher than that, which is going to be G here on our 12th fret. Now, once we have this note, this note, and this note as three Gs, um, it's kind of like a cell phone tower, we can have a fourth G and find it um, in other places. So for instance, we have our open string, which is a G. We also have a G here on the 10th fret, you know, so we're up to like five G's right now. It's pretty awesome. Um, but here's a G, here's a G, here's a G, here's a G, here's a G. And in order to play two octaves, we want to kind of be mindful of where our root notes are, number one. And then number two is how we can kind of connect some scale patterns that perhaps we already know, like our four fret span pattern. And usually when we connect it, we are going to have to shift at some point or, or have a little bit of a jump, um, but don't worry, we'll get there. Um, the other fingering pattern that I really like to use is what I call the five fret span scale, which means that instead of one finger per fret across four frets, we are going to go with um, a pattern that will start with our index finger. And then we're going to jump up to use our middle finger on the fifth fret in this case. So we're going to kind of skip this next one and use our middle finger here then use our pinky. So notes would be G, A, B, 
going in whole steps and I'm using my first finger, second finger, and pinky. I'm gonna do the same pattern on the following string. And then I'm gonna use my first finger, my index finger, and my middle finger, and this is gonna give me my five fret span shape. Now you can see that the advantage of this is that we're already starting to move up the fretboard. You know, we're already starting to go in this direction rather than stay right here. You know, I usually refer to these things as this is like a horizontal shape and this is a vertical shape. So we're already, we're already starting to move vertically, which is pretty great. Now, as we do this, we want to make sure that we know that when we play a scale, any note in that scale, so G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, and G, those are all the notes that we need. So anywhere we play any of those notes will be fair game. So if I needed to play the sixth scale degree of G, I'm going to be playing an E, and it could be my open E, this E, this E, this E. Any of those E's will be the sixth degree of our G major scale. And that's really important because, again, that gives us flexibility in terms of knowing where we can get certain notes on the fretboard. Once we know that, you know, it opens up a lot of different options for us and then we kind of put some patterns together. So one thing that I like to do is try to use one shape as much as I can and then try to jump to another location where I can continue playing something. So for this two octave G major scale, I'm gonna start with my five fret span shape. Play that first octave, then realize like, hey, my pinky is here to play the next note, the A, as I'm repeating it, so now this would be the second scale degree, or sometimes we might refer to it as the ninth. And then I'm going to jump and put my third, or, and go for the, the third scale degree with my index finger. Now when I do that, I realize, that, hey, if I start with my index finger on the third scale degree, I'm setting myself up for traditional four fret span. And I can play the rest of the scale in this one position without having to jump any further. So when I play this two octave major scale with this particular pattern, it involves one jump. I can use my five fret span shape here. Jump. As soon as I land here, it's four fret span the rest of the way. So we're really kind of just taking some of our scale shapes that we know, but then figuring out where to jump and how to connect that with the next appropriate shape. So again, as I go forward, I'm going five fret span. There's my G, so I've hit my first octave. Then I'm gonna play the second scale degree in the same position, jump to hit the third scale degree, and then follow with the rest of the notes as if I'm playing this basically that four fret span shape. So it's, it's essentially going from here, that five fret span shape to this four fret span shape, but without repeating any notes and with making that shift from here to here, from scale degree two to three. So you can kind of see like, oh yeah, here's my five fret span shape, here's my four fret span shape, and we're figuring out how to connect those two. Then descending, we're gonna go exactly the same way down. Jump. So again, we start here with our pinky on the highest note, the G. We're gonna go four fret span down to our third scale degree. Then we're gonna jump and put our pinky on the second scale degree. We're gonna five fret span the rest of the way down. So again, this is a great way for you to practice a two octave G major scale. And then what I encourage you to do is to get really comfortable with that, you know, play with a metronome, um, bump the tempo up, and then think about ways that you can kind of create music with this, you know? So like sometimes I like to practice just my moments of shifting where I might go like. You know, if I just make like a little melodic theme there using some of the notes, it practices that shift. You know, or I just went like one, two, two, one, two, two, three, five. And that's kind of like a cool little theme or bass part you could come up with. And then you might be able to practice the same thing somewhere else. Like, uh... And there you have a bass part. You can do it here. 
you know, kind of like play little themes and just force yourself to move around the scale and be mindful of where you're shifting, where you're jumping and connecting different scale shapes. So I hope you found this lesson helpful for more exercises like this and just like general thoughts on scale practice and baseline practice in general, please head over to my Patreon page or to my True Fire channel for more goodies. Check out my website, rhymeandora.com and have a great day, everybody. Happy practicing and keep it groovy.